Hello there friends, Alan here. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech Shorts. Be sure to hit that subscribe and notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our and or coverage. A lot of people are pissed off about this. It's a blaster in universe, but to even the least gun enthusiastic individual out there, they'll recognize it as an AK platform rifle. You have the iconic wooden looking handguard, the gas block over the barrel that extends into the top heavy looking barrel jacket. Even the modified mag that they put onto this thing has a telltale curvature that people associate with the AK. Now, people who have a lot of experience with firearms or first person shooters or both have commented how lazy this design looks and how it's not really Star Star Wars. I agree actually that this is a lazy design aspect, but I don't agree that this isn't real Star Wars. This is actually 100% how Star Wars has always handled its blasters. From the very beginning, prop houses like Bafti & Co. would take real-life weapons like the Sterling submachine gun and turn it into the Stormtrooper's infamous E-11. This massive DLT-19 that Skeen uses is clearly an MG-34, a German World War II era machine gun. Same thing goes for this DC-15A that the clone troopers use. Han Solo's blaster, the DL-44, is based on an old Mauser C-96. Every Star Wars weapon in Galaxy that goes pew-pew originally went bang-bang in our universe. The thing is, all of these modified weapons at least had some scopes strapped onto them or different barrels and doohickeys, which were designed to make the thing look a little less like a gun. This AK-47, aside from a shorty mag and a switched-out rifle stock, is clearly still an AK. But I would argue that if you are a gun nut or you understand weapons, none of the guns in Star Wars really ever made that much sense. I mean, who puts a rifle scope on a blaster pistol? Why do E-11s have scopes when stormtroopers have helmets on that they can't really look down the scopes through? They usually fire from the hip anyway. If these blasters had been designed from scratch, it would have given off a completely different vibe and not looked like Star Wars at all. Star Wars has always used modified real firearms to make their blasters, one because it was cheaper and the first Star Wars film had like zero budget, but also because George Lucas always meant for this universe to be a commentary about our own. If anything, the fact that in Andor they used the OG AK-47, not the AKM or the AK-74, you can tell by looking at the barrel, it's very fitting. The original AK-47, for better or worse, has been a symbol for rebellion, insurgency, and chaos. It's even on the flag of Mozambique. And given Andor's very gray, moral scale so far, it's very fitting that these rebels would have this type of weapon. I also like the fact that there are no scopes or no fancy sci-fi devices bolted on. These are rebels. They're not supposed to have fancy stuff. This is an artistic choice that wasn't lazy. It's completely intentional. 